Hello fellow lowlanders living atop the mountain, Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Le Sara Summit Kingdom. Episode 5, Elevated Research. Because I'm not ready to set up a second monk district, because I'm busy with other things, I'm just going to set up some basic housing around the monks that at least have like food and some of the other amenities as a stopgap measure. At some point it makes sense to have a second district, especially one that is um centered around another monastery so that we have higher research levels, but um, everything takes, you know, attention and time. So uh, I'm doing it cheap right now. Just shoving it in. There we go. Now we're back in the black. Not by much, but technically yes. All right, so we have the incense ramped up for the perfumery. And let's move this perfumery here. Cool. Now, according to Chromonides, uh, we actually only need one perfumery. We have a demand of 7.2 and a supply of 9, so it's done. Perfume is done. Uh, then, what we have left is between butter lamps and ornaments. And... Unlike the perfume where we already had all of the supplies needed, both of those are a little bit more complicated because, and, and I'll show you, the butter lamps, here they are. It's a copper mine to a copper smith for utensils. So we already have utensils, right? Um, then it is forester to charcoal pile. Uh, we already have a forester charcoal setup. We don't have a lot of surplus charcoal, but I could add more to it. That wouldn't be too complicated. And then the last part of the supply for the butter lamps is a yak shack for milk into a butter beater instead of a cheese maker to make a butter lamp maker. Um, so that's one of the supplies and, and it would include one unique building, which is the butter be beater. The thing is, with the way that my cheese district is laid out, this building here, this carrier post, has all the milk. So this carrier post very easily could just send milk to a butter beater. It wouldn't be that much more effort because it, uh, because that's where our milk is pulled already. Uh, the other one, which is the ornaments, is a forester to charcoal, a gold mine, and a copper mine. This is probably going to be a little bit more expensive, uh, if I was to guess, because gold mines means um, some sort of complex road infrastructure in order to get out to where the gold is stored. So let's see, before I commit to one over the other, let's see where the gold is. There is gold here and here, and it is absolutely nowhere near where my buildings are. And I think those are the only two gold veins on this mountain. So that answers my question. Butter lamps makes a heck of a lot more sense. So let's go that route. Let's commit to it. So I'm building another yak shack to send more milk to the carrier post. And then instead of a Instead of a cheesemaker, we'll set up a butter beater. So then milk comes to the butter beater. And then I have butter to send out. And instead of a yak shack or a yak post, because we, we're not sending... Um, I think I could probably get away with not even having a yak post. Actually, let's do this as cheaply as possible. If I have a road here, and I move this as far out from where the supply can supply, right? And then this has my butter. I can very easily set up the butter lamp manufactory uh, close enough to the commodity supplier that it doesn't need uh, a whole unique set of carriers. So I think that makes the most sense. Then, we'll have the butter lamp maker. 
And I can plate it right there. Done. So then this thing needs to be supplied charcoal, or coal, rather, and, well, technically it's charcoal, and uh, utensils. I might need to set up uh, additional utensils. I don't think... Oh, no, I have a surplus of four utensils. Perfect. So there we go. Two of the utensils of that surplus of four is being sent to our butter lamp maker. And then um, coal. I don't have a surplus of three coal, so I'm going to need to set up another uh, charcoal burner. And we're done. My artisans are now tier four, which is fully upgraded. So the objective to reach uh, 630 artisans is a lot easier to meet because they'll be densely packed in. So what I'm gonna do is uh, upgrade some of these buildings a little bit keeping an eye on my supply and demand for things like utensils. So right now, the butter lamps. Oh, we have another avalanche. Powerful avalanche. And as a result, I believe the path of this avalanche has fundamentally changed. Before, I think it came down and just like went left, but now this time it's split because there was just physically more snow. Um. Butter lamps are now in, in demand. As you can see, I'm not meeting demands anymore. So, that means we need a second butter beater. A second butter lamp maker. And a, yet another yak shack. Yak shack to the milk. Milk to the butter beater. Butter beater to the lamp maker. Lamp maker down to the commodities. And then... I did have spare utensils, and I ramped up my charcoal, so I now have spare charcoal. Demand is met. Uh, but not yaks. I need more yaks. Nice. So I had mentioned um, that I think the next thing that would make the most sense to work towards is a second monk district. And the reason is there's physically not a lot of space left up here to expand um, this monk district any further. And we even have monks living in dorms like outside of the district, which is not really ideal. If I go any further east, I have an avalanche that's going to crush me. Uh, further west is a river, so there's really nowhere else to go. This whole area is avalanche territory, but this area is not. There's not a lot of space physically here for, like, um, you know, a, a large amount of infrastructure, but there's no snow caps that, that snow it in. So I think that probably makes the most sense. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not destroying these, there is a build cost to things. So, like, a Mr. Plow, for instance, has a construction cost of 120. Um, so building it and then just disabling it prevents it from being costly. It doesn't cost any upkeep. Um, so sometimes it's helpful to have buildings that are a little bit more pricier to build initially, just sitting around for when you need them. Like a Mr. Plow, if anything ever gets snowed in. Hey, Crimson, thank you for the gifted subs. So this route is broken. What changed? Um, this herbalist is physically too far. Got it. At some point, well, let me try to nudge things around for now. Is 
there. I don't need to really rework anything, just move it around a little bit, it's fine. Okay. We still have a surplus of eight uh, incense too, which is a pretty decent sum to be sitting on. All right, so another, so the concept that I had here is ultimately the goal is to kind of push to um, to tier eight research. And you get there most effectively with monasteries. The worry I have is with this little spit of land, it's just physically not large enough to really contain much. Which also means that, like, coming out here that is larger and seemingly more protected also has the gold nodes. So you know how before I was like, maybe I won't go out to gold? Maybe I should. Maybe I should have a large bridge that gaps and go all the way out. How expensive is that? are these bridges? Well, these... Well, what's... I can't even click the bridge. What's the upkeep cost, man? Hey, maybe we'll do that. Feels a little crazy to me. But uh, I don't really want to be building a monastery district if uh, if it's constantly victim to, like, giant snow squalls. And this spot here is, like, got no snow around it. So it's kind of nice. And it's better. We also have um, more salt available to us. I kind of wish that there was a way to induce avalanches so that you could physically see um, how they go. So I think what we could do is this spot here. Let me um, redesign these bridges. This spot here would be maybe good for a cedar grove, uh, like a permanent place to grow all of our cedar and then to export it to where we need it. So I'll put my bridges as high up as I can so that the zone isn't cut up by cedar or by uh, by roads. Like that. That's a, that's a good amount of space for all the cedar that we need. Because I'm growing a little cedar here and a little cedar there, and it makes sense to just consolidate it all and, and do it more efficiently. And then dole it out from yak posts or something. So let's do that. So right off the bat, we're going to want a yak post to actually send the cedar. And I think most of our cedar is going to go east, so I'm going to put the yak post as far east as I can. Um... So if I disable my um, my academy, the supply of things that were not manufacturable without the higher level is still manufactured because I already have the infrastructure. So what ends up happening with like the perfumery, for instance, is the upkeep goes up, but that still saves me money because I don't have extra monks to work like this yak post and other places. So I'd rather artificially increase my um, artificially increase my upkeep this way, which isn't a big deal, rather than like to have to juggle extra monks that uh, I am only using temporarily. So, all right, let's get the cedar in. And this is going to break a lot of supply until I set up the um, the infrastructure for it. Just fine. Everything's going to go real negative until it gets resolved. So these cedar painters still need cedar. But I'm going to move them over a bit. Then 
The reason is the run between the yak post and the cedar painters will be shorter, um, meaning that it will be less expensive. Why would research level be decreasing there? Oh, because of the dye supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, the other thing is, on the other half of this little spit of land, uh, consulting all my herbalism uh, might make sense as well, because I just have so many herbs as well. So, some cedar, some herbs. Let's see what we can fit. And it's the consolidation efforts like this one that help to um, uh, help to save money in the long run. A considerable amount of it. Tangia, thanks for the gift of subs as well. That might be too far, but I'll fix that later. So these are, um... Yeah, these are herbalists not on a road. Yep. So I'm not even going to need this carrier post, I don't think. I'm going to destroy it. So we've got... Our die makers are here. I can move them... I'm going to... Um, everything is going to go real wrong, real briefly. I'm going to move the die makers up here just so that they're a little bit more flush with the road. And then the die makers are uh, supplying dyes for the cedar painters. So one die maker makes enough dye for both cedar painters. So I'm not really sure I even need two dye producers. I'm going to disable one for now. So then this dye producer needs herbs and all of these herbs are going to come from this area. So we have a yak post dedicated towards cedar and a yak post dedicated towards herbs. So the herbs come over here. And now this dye producer is... This specific dye producer then needs to split its supply at a carrier post. And then the carrier post brings it out to both cedar painters, which then brings it to the um, this uh, cart post. So the reason to do this is I'm also going to be able to ramp this up like that. Because the whole point of this project is to have a second monastery. Um, oh, that's already being... No, it's not. Game's lying to me. Alright, there we go. There. So now we have two die producers dumping both of the dies to a carrier post, which doles it out to the... Um, four cedar painters and then these other two new cedar painters are going to get cedar from the cedar farm and then these cedar painters the idea here is to pull all of the cedar and then dole that out 
so that I have excess cedar. Because this monastery only needs six, but I'm going to be producing um, 16. So I can have like three monasteries um, to recapture all that like excess produced um, cedar. So if all my cedar painters are here, maybe also a yak post, or in this case, I'll just do a, um, a uh, uh, cart post. So stop sending it directly to the monastery and send it to the cart post. Oh, no, I already had a cart post. What am I doing? All right. So this cart post has uh, is sending six of it out to this monastery and then has a surplus of ten. So it's ready to supply a second monastery. All right. These incense makers I broke. Um... So I'm going to move them as well. And just what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to um, condense everything so that things are efficient and and um, out of the path of the snow. Because snow is only going to get worse. All right, so these two incense makers need herbs. And cedar. And we have a deficit of cedar. So now we have enough cedar for the second set of painters and the incense makers, and we have enough um, herbalism. In fact, I have one more herbalist than I even need, so I can disable one. And all I'm missing now is yaks. Done. So in consolidating all that, um, we probably saved a, I wouldn't say like a tidy sum of money, but like a little bit of money in, in doing that. And condensed it. And also it, it can scale up. I can add more, more cedar growing here uh, very easily um, to meet demand. By just building an extra one down there and connecting it up and build, go on, so on and so forth. All right, so we have all of the painted cedar that we need for a second monastery. So then this cart post will bring the extra cedar over. Oh, I haven't actually built the monastery yet. Kind of need that, don't I? All right, definitely disable that because monasteries cost a bajillion to run when they're not doing anything. There we go. No road connection. Yeah, that's kind of required, too. This cart post might be a bit of an expensive run just because of the, um, the length of the run. So if we take a look here... Actually, it's not that bad. It's, it's because the other monastery is disabled. Ooh, I was curious about this avalanche. So yeah, this avalanche um, snows up the bridge a little bit, but it steers pretty clear of everything important, right? All of this new island of infrastructure, so that's not much of an issue. Right, I'm going to fast forward time to fill up our treasury so that uh, I have more money to play with. But it is really cool to see... Like, these are cart post workers moving, you know, f uh, and then moving food and moving, uh, um, that looks like uh, painted cedar. So I mean, these are painted cedar headed to the monastery. 
you know, if you take the time to kind of zoom in and figure out what everyone's doing, it's... They're all working. So here's the, the dye makers. And the incense makers. The carts of uh, the yak posts of uh, cedarwood being delivered and dyes being delivered. The terraced herbalist and cedar farms. So I haven't really taken a moment to sort of appreciate all of the fine detail. Oh, look at them all drinking. We're farming in the fields. What's crazy is like the the farms have three workers, right? Well, you can count them. One, two, three. You know? Actually, this one has a fourth. I see you. But that might, you know, be a uh, mill worker collecting or something. All right. Well, that that that's enough of that. Back to our monastery. So let's. Uh, one thing that we're not going to be able to supply here, I don't believe, for our monks is so one one disadvantage of this spot is there's no fishing, right? So if we want fish, I am going to have to ship it. I'm going to have to either ship it from here or here. I'm going to have to ship it, right? Because our monks really like fish as the food source, but. Um, but there's no rivers over there. So that's the first thing I want to figure out before doing anything else is where the fish is going to originate from. Uh, our artisans don't like fish, but they have a river. So it might make sense for some of the river here to be cart posted for the Monasteries demand a fish. It's a long run. It's quite the path. But fish uh, counts for double, so I think it's worth it. So we have 14 fish here. Go for food distribution. And I might move where this um, food market is. You know, I don't know, know exactly how close or how far it should be. And here's the root. All right. Duplicating more or less the, uh, the design we have over here. I do about the same thing on the other side. We'll have vertical roads. And let's get the houses in now. So one of the houses is already outside of the range of the food market. So I'll move that in. Oops. It's a copy. There we go. did I have over here? That's the next question. So ignoring the houses on the outskirts of the compound, six, eight, 16, 17, 19. So like 19 or 20 houses is maybe the gold meat. There's a little bit more space here, so I might be able to get away with a few more. So I have three, six, nine, 12, 14 so far. And I also want to leave some space to not block the gold mines if we do want to make ornamentation at any point. So I don't want to go too far back either.
The roads are rather expensive, but once I set up a donation post, uh, everyone here will be paying or donating taxes. And then maybe just like last time, I'll set up a uh, food post down here. As it's easier to supply everyone with food. And then I can build a wall there. I like it. There's a, there's a, sort of like a nice symmetry that I'm sure once I set up the mandalas and everything else, I'm going to ruin. But there we go. Um, another thing that we can supply them with is cheese, because we already have a central spot for cheese. This is our cheese yak shop. So let's ramp up. I don't have a lot of surplus milk, so let's um, add some milk to this infrastructure. And then add some cheese, and then run cheese up to the monks. milk here, here, and then... Ooh, that's not close enough. Done. So now we have a surplus of seven cheese. And bring that up to the new monastery. Oh man, I am barely scraping by here. One way, of course, is just like increase your population to increase your tax collection. But I'll work to set up a donation spot here as well. So we can start collecting from these monks. Yeah, you freeloaders. All right. Um, so they got cheese, they got fish... Uh, eggs is really simple to do, as is um, honey. So eggs, all I have to do is add a few. Uh, that's apparently enough for now, but I'm sure as I increase the level of the dorms, they will need more eggs, so I can ramp that up. Um, honey. Down here. So now these guys have fish, eggs, cheese, and honey, and they don't produce anything but eggs here. Everything else is imported. Um, scholarship is straightforward. Actually, actually, just turn this on now. And they level up in the process because they are being given scholarship. And it you keep going up and up and up and up and up. Going up to level six. Level six opens up the option to be able to make tape, uh, tapestries. And butter tea. Butter tea is at level five. So if we take a look at the demands of um, the other casts. Butter tea is one of the demands that the lowlanders to hit level four will need. As you can see... The lowlanders require three more units of food supplied, and I only have two options here for two each, which is smoked meats and butter tea. So there's no way to get max level lowlanders without making butter tea. Uh, so we did get butter tea accessed, and then also uh, yak guardians is a uh, it's a enlightenment service that unlocks at level five uh, five as well, where it's um, monks that that uh, have you know, like a yak shrine. Pilgrimage spot for yaks. I don't need any of those right now because I don't need lowlanders to get up to level th uh, four at the moment. But I just wanted to point out the the uh, research options that we just unlocked. And it also means that uh, we're now using um, more of our cedar paint. Because each one of these monasteries is six apiece. And I'm not really using this academy anymore. Although I could turn it on, I'm just going to destroy it. Instead. Alright, back over here. So, uh, other things to offer these guys. 
uh, wall. And maybe also... What did I do for the other ones? Incense? So these guys have Mandala, Scholarship, High Zone, and Wall. But um, they're, they would need Incense and a Gong or something like that to get up to level 4. And Butter Tea or Textiles. Textiles is pretty easy to supply, especially when you have a lot of Yak. Um, so in order to get this Monastery up to level 4, the way forward would probably be Incense and Textiles. That would be the cheap way. Because I'm already making incense and textiles is... I already have the supply of wool for a lot of the textiles. So it's not that much of a stretch. So over on the other side, let's set up a mandala and a monastery walls. So a mandala here covers all but this one house. Whoops, didn't mean to upgrade that. All but this one here. Which can be uh, remedied rather easily, I think. Actually, it can't be remedied that easily. Okay, eh, buy house. It's cheaper for me to just blow you up. Sorry, buddy. All right. Um, I'm a little worried about putting in some initial monastery walls because I think things are going to move around a lot. Uh, another thing to meet... Another need to meet would be the decorations need. Uh, I think the other zone got decorated, so I'm going to check on that. Yeah, the other zone definitely did, got decorated for the two points. So, let's decorate over here, too. Oops. Trying to do it as cheaply as possible for the most bang from a buck as possible. Which is probably going to be look something like flowers here. Flowers there. And then we have this house. We'll just nuke it. And this one, nuke. Alright, that's my compound. Flowers there. Now, they're all decorated. And if I wall them in, they become tier three. Ooh, another avalanche. Ah, so this is the more powerful avalanche. And it definitely messed up some of my um, buildings. Way more than before. So it, uh, this one might be worth mitigating. Rusty Dusty, thank you for the uh, the resub. All right, we're gonna have to get a Mr. Plow built and running because it just uh, absolutely clobbered a bunch of our uh, stuff here. I'm upgrading some of these houses purely for the tax income. Because we're struggling to pay our bills. There we go. Nah, that's some revenue. And I'm just going to move the Mr. Plow around to uh, dig out the spots that got snowed in.
Thank you for tuning in to Laysara Summit Kingdom, which originally streamed live on Twitch May 3rd and May 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams as well as a link to Twitch. If you would like to join my Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video as well. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Laysarans.